Hello students, welcome to my class. In our previous class, we have learned one of the important property of real numbers, Euclid's division lemma and its application, how to find the HCF of two positive numbers. In today's class, we will learn another property, fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So what is fundamental theorem of arithmetic? We will see now. Every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes and this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occur. So this is the statement of fundamental theorem of arithmetic. We will uh, see now through an example. Let us consider a composite number 120. In our earlier classes, we have studied how to factor, find the prime factorization of a number. So we are going to now do the prime factorization for this number 120. So we will divide 120 by the prime number 2. So 60 again 2, 30 again by 2, 15, 3, 5. So we can write 120 as 2 into 2 into 2 into 3 into 5 or we can write it as 2 power 3 into 3 into 5. So this is what actually fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Every composite number can be expressed as a product of prime numbers and this factorization is unique. So it's a very important point that is we cannot express 120 using other prime numbers. 2, 3 and 5 are the prime factors of only prime factors of 120 and the remaining part apart from the order in which the prime factors occur. So we can change the order of these prime factors. So this is what fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now we will see its application. First application is to prove irrationality of numbers root 2, root 3, root 5, etc. And the second one, decimal expansion of rational numbers. When a rational number will have a terminating decimal expansion, when it will have a non-terminating repeating decimal expansion. So these are the two important applications of fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now we will see how to prove root 2 is irrational. So, here for proving root 2 irrational, we are using contradiction method. So, first let us assume that root 2 is a rational number. Let us assume that root 2 is rational. So, you know rational number can be expressed in the form p by q. So, here we can write root 2 as root 2 as p by q where q not equal to 0 and p and q are co-primes. So it's meaning root 2 is in its simplest form. Now we will cross multiply. So root 2 q is equal to p when you squaring on both the sides squaring so we will be getting 2q square is equal to p square. This is the first equation. So here from this equation, it is very clear that p square is a multiple of 2. So we can say that p square is divisible by 2. So we can say p square is divisible by 2. Since 2 is a prime number, since 2 is prime, we can say p is divisible by 2. p is divisible by 2. So, we will take p is equal to 2c for
for some integer c. For some integer c. Now we will substitute this value of p in equation 1. Then we will be getting 2q square is equal to 2c the whole square. That is 2q square equal to 4c square. When you cancel these two, you, have, you will get q square is equal to 2c square. So from this equation, it is very clear that q square is divisible by 2. So we can write q square is divisible by 2. Again, since 2 is a prime, we can say that q is divisible by 2. We can say q is divisible by 2. This is the next statement. Now you see these two statements, statement 2 and 3. It is given p is divisible by 2 and q is divisible by 2. So from these two statements, it is clear that p and q both are divisible by 2. That is 2 is a common factor of both p and q. So we can write 2 is a common factor of both p and q. But this statement contradicts the fact that p and q are co-prime. So co-prime means they will have only one as the common factor. But here we got P and Q have another factor 2. Another common factor 2. So this contradiction, uh, we came to this contradiction because of our wrong assumption. So our assumption is wrong. So root 2 is irrational. So this is how you have to prove root 2 is irrational. In the same way you can prove the other numbers root 3, root 5 irrational. The same steps you can do. You can follow the same steps for proving root 3 and root 5 irrationals. The next application, decimal expansion of rational numbers. This I am going to explain through few examples. First, let us consider the rational number 1 by 4. So, you know what is the decimal expansion of 1 by 4 that is 0 0.25. Next, I am going to write another number 1 by 5. So, here the decimal expansion is 0 0.2. Now, we will consider the rational number 3 by 10. Here, the decimal expansion is 0 0.3. One more example, 1 by 3. Here, the decimal expansion is 0 0.333, etc. Out of these four examples, if you see the first three, first three rational numbers have terminating decimal expansion. Can you find any pattern here? See, we will see now. Here in the first number, we will consider the denominator. Denominator 4, we can write as 2 square. The prime factorization of the denominator is 2 square. The same way, second number 5, if you see, 5 is equal to 5 power 1. Factorization is 5 power 1. Then the third number, denominator 10, the prime factorization of 10 is 2 into 5. So, in these three examples, if you see, the prime factorization of denominator is of the form 2 power n into 5 power n. So, in rational numbers, with the denominator's prime factorization, 2 power m into 5 power n will have a terminating decimal expansion. Here in this question, the denominator is not in the form 2 power m into 5 power n. So, it is not a terminating decimal expansion. It is non-terminating repeating decimal expansion. Now, we will consider another example 14 by 14. 
So without performing actual division, we will see this example. Without consider, uh, doing actual division, you have to find out whether this rational number will have a terminating decimal expansion or non-terminating repeating decimal expansion. So when you do such type of questions, first thing what we have to do is we have to check whether the rational number is in its simplest form or not. So here in this rational number 14 by 40 it is not in its simplest form. So first we will divide by 2 and we will make it as 7 by 20. Now this is in its simplest form. After changing the rational number into simplest form, we have to find the prime factorization of the denominator. Now we will find out the prime factorization of the denominator that is 20, 2 times 10 to 5. So now we got the prime factorization of 20 as 2 square into 5. So this is of the form 2 power m into 5 power n. So this rational number will have a terminating decimal expansion. Now uh, after how many decimal place this rational number will terminate. That also we can find out. So we will see here this 20 we can write as 2 square into 5. If the denominator is a power of 10 then we can easily find its decimal expansion. So we are going to multiply both numerator and denominator by 5. So we are getting 35 by 2 square into 5 square. That is 10 square. So next uh, 35 by 10 square. 10 square is nothing but 100. So 35 by 100 the answer is 0 0.35. So we can say that after 2 decimal place that rational number will terminate. Decimal expansion will terminate. Now without doing these steps we can easily find out after how many decimal place the uh, decimal expansion will terminate. For that first you see the prime factorization of the denominator. Here you have to check the highest power. Here you have to check the powers of the prime numbers 2 and 5 and you check the highest power. Here the power of 2 is 2 and power of 5 is 1. Out of these two, highest power is 2. So, after 2 decimal place, the number will terminate. This is an easy method to find after how many decimal place, the decimal expansion will terminate. Thank you students.